and welcome to MLG Seattle. Today we're talking to celebrity metal artsmith Thane Bryanton of Thane's World of Interesting Things. Being an artist is one thing, but adding the elements of fire, steel, and brawn to create a whole new canvas isn't for the faint of heart or hand. We have Sienna Gunderson on the scene to learn more about this beautiful medium. Take it away, Miss Sienna. I'm Sienna Gunderson here at Papa Shop. We're going to go inside to talk to Thane. You're a cutie. <laughs> what inspired you to do metal art? Oh gosh, um, probably goes back to when my brother and my dad and I used to make things back in San Diego. My brother was a welder fabricator. He was great. He could make anything but glass. And dad always had a great way with making things too. Um, when I retired a few years ago, I bought a welder to fix things here around the farm. But more recently, I kind of found um, I'm fairly artistic. And I started making things, you can just kind of see over here. And uh, it just kind of bloomed from there. with ideas for your artwork? It's a good question. I spend a lot of time on Instagram and Etsy and uh, YouTube. YouTube's helped me learn kind of how to weld better. I've even taken a welding class now that I'm 63 years old. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. So I get most of my inspiration from other art that I see and then I modify things. Uh, for instance, I saw something like this on somebody's site and I found this rock up in Puyallup last weekend and it developed into this. Kind of an abstract, but it's called Who Done It. So here's the little guy with his monocle and that's his protege. So it's like Sherlock Holmes. But uh, stuff like this is just what I come up with and until I had a welder I didn't even know I had that kind of talent. <laughs> that you use for your artwork? Now that I've got friends and family that know that I do this kind of stuff and my neighbors too, they oftentimes come by the house and just drop stuff off or call me or let me know they have things for me. So I've accumulated quite a bit of stuff. I've got probably four or 500 horseshoes that a farrier gave me. So I like to make things from those. You saw some out there. And I've also got a whole lot of just random stuff that I pick up. So this I just got yesterday, which I will hang a bell from, and it's probably part of an old fireplace set. But anyway, that'll become a hanger. And I've got old gears and saws and bicycle parts, these little leaves. I can't make them for what I can buy this for at Goodwill or Value Village, so that's another source of my surprise parts too. But out back of the shop, I've got a whole big area full of wagon wheels, bicycles, um, horseshoes, railroad spikes, all kinds of stuff out there to make things from. When did you start and what's your favorite project? Um, I started right around December and um, kind of got big into it in January or so this year. And I just did um, a little assessment and I've just realized I've sold over a hundred pieces already. It's pretty exciting. And uh, one of my favorite pieces is out here. Let me show you. So this is a, 
this is a bell that I made, and I call it Gold Rush because the bell is kind of a black and gold patina. A little hard to see in here, but out in the light, it's really, really bright. Well, this is an early 1900s or late 1800s wheel, and then this piece was made by the Ideal Tool Company of Connecticut. It's a 1909 30-06 uh, rifle cartridge reloading tool. I had no idea before I welded it to this, but I could have got 85 bucks for it on eBay. Anyway, it just seemed to make sense that this is called Gold Rush, and it's got a great tone. So I think that's one of my favorite pieces right now. It's just looking for a new home. Along with these other bells too. Where can people see and buy some of your pieces? I have uh, a Facebook page called Things World Interesting Things. And on there you can see a lot of these. This one uh, is called Autumn, and there's a gal that's committed for it already. It's got the fall colors, and then I handcrafted the maple leaf on there too. And it just takes just a little slight breeze for that thing to ring. But they can find me on Facebook and also on Instagram. And eventually I'll probably have a uh, YouTube channel as well. I just haven't gotten that far because I'm busy making things. Thanks for coming in. That was a fantastic interview, and it looked like you had quite a bit of fun running around the shop and visiting with the chickens <laughs> that were outside. <laughs> Do you have anything that you would like to say in closing? I love you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to MLG Seattle. We love you. Bye. <laughs> Say it again. We're going to go inside to talk to Thane. All right, do some tricks. Ready? Yep. Is it dangerous if I get too close? Nope.